Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Goonies and so I thought to, just to get us started I'd go ahead and show you my very own version of the Truffle Shuffle. So just here we go. In the Goonies, Never Say Die from Funko, two to five players take on the roles of either the Goonies, those kooky kids in search of hidden pirate treasure, or you're going to be the Goondonks Master, this uh, ethereal force, I guess, that's playing against the kooky guys. Yes, this is an all-on-one game in which the Goonies must battle the evil Goondonks Master. Each character will select one of the iconic Goonies characters. You can play as either Mouth, or Mikey, or Sloth, or Chunk, or even Lieutenant Commander Data. Now each character is going to get a certain amount of wish tokens, these are a currency in the game, and you may also, depending on the character you play, get a certain number of cards, Mouth gets kind of these wisecrack cards, Data gets invention cards, etc, etc. You're going to separate several different decks of cards, um, you're going to have item cards, you're going to have treasure cards and legendary treasure cards and a few other little things as well. You're also going to have uh, some different colored dice. You're going to have red dice, blue dice, and green dice. The red dice are the poorest, the blue dice are medium, and the green dice are the best. The game board is kind of a map of the various caves that are underneath the town, and you're going to go ahead, depending on the different adventure, the Goondocks Master is going to set them up so that they can go ahead and actually uh, illustrate uh, the different pathways they're going to take and different adventures that they're going to have. And the Goondocks Master is going to actually set up a, a divider between him and the rest of the players, and behind that divider they are going to keep all of their resources, and they're going to have the Adventure Guide. Now the Adventure Guide is going to tell uh, the Goondocks Master exactly what's going to happen in the different uh, rooms the Goonies go in and they explore, so that the Goonies don't know exactly what's going to happen when they go anywhere, but the Goondocks Master has all of that information. Now critically, you're going to have an hourglass, and the hourglass kind of has four pieces of sand, I'm bigger than grains of sand. Anyway, what's going to happen during the game is most of the, in most of the adventures, if ever all of that sand gets to the bottom before the Goonies complete their objectives, then the Goondocks Master wins the game. Now the game starts with the Goonies' turn, and the Goonies' first thing they're going to do is at, at the end of a round they'll flip their cards over, so they flip them back up. And this is because you don't go in clockwise order or a predetermined order, you can discuss it and go in any order you want. So you flip that up, you get a number of wish tokens uh, at the beginning of the round, and then you're off. Now each Goonie gets two actions per turn. You can move to an adjacent location, you can search for items where there's searchable tokens that they can look through to try to find things. They can attack a foe, they can rest in order to gain a wish token. They can do a treasure action uh, if, if their card has an action that says they can do on their cards, or they can do an adventure action. This is if there's something on the board that says they can take an action to interact with it, they can do that. Frequently, the Goonies are going to be engaged in skill checks. They're going to have to do certain things. Now, each Goonie has kind of a set of, um, you know, what die they're going to roll for certain actions. And it varies with the, with the various characters. For instance, uh, 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 Sloth is very physically strong. Well, what players can do is they're going to roll those die, and they're looking for a certain number of successes, depending on what the skill asks for, or what the check asks for. And you're rolling bones. You're trying to get the, the, the bones. The most bones you get is determines whether or not you get successes. Um, so you're going to go ahead and roll those. However, if you have a wish token, you can upgrade your die, one of your weaker die, to one of your stronger die. You can go ahead and do that, and uh, you can, uh, so theoretically, you could spend as many as you wanted to to upgrade them all to the, the green die, which is the best. But if there's another Goonie in your room, they can spend a wish token to give you an extra die. You can only roll a total of three die, but they can do that to, again, improve your chances of succeeding in a uh, skill check. 
Now, if at any time you're rolling those die and you roll a skull, that means that the uh, Gundok's master, he is going to get one of his GM tokens, which is going to allow him more opportunities to do things to thwart our heroes. Now, when you do things like take a search action, uh, you actually get to draw an item card regardless of whether you succeed or not. And then if you do succeed, you get to draw a treasure card. Typically, the items have like kind of one-off one abilities, whereas treasure cards have maybe abilities they can do again or more powerful abilities. You also need to discard down to your maximum number of wish tokens. So after the Goonies have gone, it is time for the Goondocks Master to go. Now the Goondocks Master is going to do a few things on his turn. First of all, he gains a GM token, and then if there are any foes on the board, these could be big boss characters like the Fratellis or, or, or uh, One-Eyed Willy or the Octopus, or they could be even just kind of wandering enemies. They could be bats or rats or other kinds of no goodies. Sometimes they're skeletons. Um, they can go ahead and they can activate those characters at that time. Now, if one of the foes that the Goondocks Master controls attacks one of the uh, Goonies, uh, and the Goonies take damage, they have a certain, a certain amount of damage they can take, but if they take uh, damage, they have the option to spend the Wish Tokens, which essentially negates any damage that they would take. Then you get to draw a GM card uh, from the deck, and you'll already have a hand of GM cards. These are kind of cards that are filled with nasty sort of surprises, and then you can actually play one. Now you can play one of those cards in order to do something. You know, you could cause a cave in, or you could cause flooding in a room. Things that are going to slow down or hurt the adventurers. They also have re react abilities, and the GM can actually play react cards during the uh, Goonies turn to react to things that they're doing. The, the Goondocks Master can also spend some of his tokens in order to draw more cards or play more cards. The Goondocks Master can also do, if he draws a certain card and he plays it, he can do a, an End is Nigh roll. If he does that, he can roll three die. If he gets three successes, he gets to move one of the Hourglass tokens from the top to the bottom. Now remember, if all of those tokens get to the bottom, the Goondocks Master wins. At the end of the Goondocks Master phase, he must discard down to five cards. Then playing passes once again to the Goonies. Now, as I said, the Goondocks Master wins if all four of those Hourglass tokens are at the bottom of the Hourglass at the beginning of the Goonies' turn. But if the Goonies succeed in achieving their particular scenario, then they win! The Goonies never say die. So this game is kind of a, it really does have, I mean, it's, it's a dungeon crawler, and it really has kind of a Dungeons and Dragons feel to it, with one person kind of controlling the adventure. Um, but, but, but there is a real all-on-one sense here. Um, both, you know, they play the first scenario and it's very easy for the Goonies to win. It gets harder after that. Um, the, the Goondocks Master can become more powerful and of course every time those Goonies are rolling die he's potentially becoming more powerful because they're rolling to give him more tokens which allow him to manipulate the cards better. The game is very evocative of the film. The, the theme really does come through with the characters. Like I say, you've got those mouth cars where he can make wisecracks to do things to the, to the Goondocks Master and, you can, and you've got the um, you know, Data's invention cards. It, it, the theme comes through, but of course, there was no Goondocks Master in the in the in the film, and there's some supernatural stuff that goes on in here, which wasn't in the film. So even though it is very evocative of the film, there there's some there's some expansion there of the Goonies universe, if you will. The game is fun. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, I I liked it. I played as both the the Goondocks Master and as the Goonies, and I've and I've had fun with both of them. Um, I don't know, though I didn't love it. Uh, you know, you can play the game kind of like a big, long campaign. I think there's like ten adventures or something. You can play it as a campaign, or you can just go back and play specific uh, scenarios. And I haven't replayed any of them yet, but I kind of wonder how much fun that would be if you kind of know what's coming. I think the fun of this game lies in the discovery. I think if you're a fan of the Goonies, you'll get a kick out of this game. You'll have fun with it. I did. Um, but like I say, it's it, it didn't blow me away, and I was kind of hoping it would. And I, you know, uh, Prospero Hall, who designed this, they have they, they they've made some games that I have just loved and and um, I like this one I like this one a lot I didn't love it maybe in time I, I may get to that point but I don't know so in that sense I was a little disappointed I was I was just kind of hoping for just a just a little bit more from this game still I enjoyed it I'm gonna say a try it for you buy it but I'm gonna make it a very positive try it for you buy it it's a fun game I don't know that it's a, a brilliant game. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and other fun topics like that. Please subscribe to that channel. And if you've liked this uh, video, please give us a thumb on Board Game Geek. We really appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say good night, Corey Feldman, wherever you are. Somebody help me. Again, and I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know where I've been. Please, somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time, and I'll be dying. Once a year, I wind up in the band. 
Number eight, Tom Vazel's Ego. It's the largest board game ever created. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Vazel.